Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. And we are picking up again where we left off on the Thursday Craft Corner on the Bead Embroidery Series. And this, this episode we are going to be putting on the bale. So what I've done is, if you remember in the last video, this is approximately the bead where I came out. And I just kept what string I had on there or cord. So I've just put a, I've decided what um, bead I wanted to use. So now this is approximately how many beads. I didn't really count them out, but just as you, that's about how big it's going to be. Okay. So now I'm going to go right back down and the same ones I came out of. like so and there so now I'm gonna go in the next one over come on now so that I can come out the next one And now, I'm just going to put a whole bunch on there because I did not count. So I'm going to be testing how big it is. And just so you know, I'm going to be coming out and doing more in each one of these. I'm probably going to end up having a total of six loops. Two out of your center one, two out of the one to the right, and two out of the one to the left of the center. Now, if you want to count them, it'd probably be much simpler counting them. I should have probably counted them. Okay, so I need a few more. Yep, not too many. <laughs> yeah, see, don't make the same mistake that I did. Count them. And I know that's not always an exact science because it depends on the beads that you have and how um, uniform they are if you're using a Delica seed bead, which I'm not, which was one of the reasons that this is not a particular Delica. So they are different size beads. Yeah, that one looks good, actually. So I'm going to come back down. You see how I'm coming back? Yeah. Okay, that looks good, actually. All right, so I'm going to come back up. The same one I started with again. Yeah. Oops. This is where I'm at so far. So, I'm not going to keep on um, doing this for you. I mean, on video. What I'm going to do is continue doing, like I said, two in this speed, two strands in this speed, and two strands in this speed. And then I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I decided to do, instead of... Um, six I decided to do four two in the center and one on each of the beads coming out okay so now what I'm gonna do is a couple of times go back even if it's just one time but 
I'm probably going to do it a couple of times. Um, I'm going to go back through these, each one, just reinforcing how much uh, string is inside of these tubes because this is how your necklace is going to hang. You see? And it's only doing that because that's not tight. But if I had something else to show you. See? That's how it's going to hang. And there will be beads on either side so it will keep it together. You'll see when it's done, but, and there's other ways of doing bales, but this is the simplest that I'm showing you today. You can bead weave a bale, you know, where it's all intertwined, but I like the loose look because these are all kind of going a little bit in different directions and stuff. I like it. I like it. It's more of a very earthy, very tribal or ancient uh, civilization. Um, you know, Egyptian or Native American or whatever, that kind of a feel to it. So I'm going to go back through these a couple of times just to make sure they are good and secure. Okay. So I'll see you. Okay, in just guys, a just to show you where I'm at on here now, I have gone back through, um, each of these a total of two times. Okay. And now I have started to do my edging here. Which all you do in order to do that is, I'll show you on this one. I decided to go with this color. There you go, that. Let me just get, get them on there and I'll show you. Okay, like that. And then where you're coming out, you just simply go right back in. If you have to, just manipulate the beads. Because if you look closer, two of them are down and then you have one sticking up. Okay? So now that you've done that, you just go back up. The next bead and you have to guide your string because it easily gets caught on fringe and other things and now you're going back up so I'm gonna pick up three more beads again and oh, come on There they are again. Now you can see it. And I'm going to go right back in. The same bead I was coming out of. Let's see? And then we're going right back in the next one. And we're going to do that all the way around. Now, for me, I am coming to the end of my cord. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it all the way around. But let me show you. I still have my tail. From before and it's back here see so what I'm gonna do if I don't have enough is finish this off bring it back when I bring it back up I'm gonna bring it back up through the inside here run it on the inside of this big tube and then back out where it's coming out and tie it off and then run that loose cord back through the inner tube the or whatever tube you can really 
okay, in order to um, just have it more secured. Remember, we secure it in these inside ones or even outside and then cut it off and then just start a new cord at the edge of another area where you have to do your edging. But I'm going to hopefully try and run it here on this side, come in, come into the tube and come out over here and finish my edging over here. Or actually come back up here and go this way. Well, no, because I, I, I tend to go all the same way, which is clockwise, just because I like all my um, cord running the same way so that there's less chance of it coming out um, because of conflicting ways or it's get pulled or something, you know. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so what I have done now is put it all on here. And then you remember I had a strand hanging here. So I ran it inside the tube, brought it back out at the same spot. Tied it off in the in the back, ran it back through and back through the inner tube, cut it off. Did that with both ends. And then I started a new st string back here. I can grab it here. Okay, this is a loose end, about, about a uh, foot long. And then tied it off. And I did like about one and a half arm lengths long. Now you don't have to do that long if you don't want to because, I mean, this is all I had to finish off. However, I decided after that and after finishing that off, I'm going to come back here with some larger beads, maybe some freshwater pearls, maybe some sort of gemstones that I'm also going to use in my strand. And I'm going to have maybe, maybe five, maybe one that hangs longer here, maybe a little bit longer, or I mean a little less long on both sides, and then the shortest here on both sides. Just to kind of tie in whatever gemstones and or pearls or whatever beads I'm using um, when I do the strand. Okay? So I'm going to have to go downstairs now. I've been up in my uh, dining room. But I'm going to go downstairs and reset up the other one after I've figured out what kind of beads I want to use um, to finish this off. And then that's going to end it for this particular episode. Next week, we will be addressing how to do the bead stringing for this necklace and how to finish the necklace off. Okay? See you in hey a bit. Guys. So I just wanted to show you, I had decided to, I, I briefly... I uh, told you in the last little bit that I was going to go through and probably put a larger bead in. So I'm probably going to do maybe five total. One in the center and then another two over here. You see what I've done? So essentially I'm just doing it like I've done everything else. You come out, and then you go back in. And what I've done here is I came out of one bead, and then I went back in the next bead, but I would, I put three, and then a larger bead, and then a, a different colored smaller bead, and then a uh, gemstone, some gemstones. And then another three beads as like my end or my stopper beads. And then back up. But once I got to the big bead, I put another three like that and went into the other one. So it fans over two different beads. Do you see that? 
and then I did the same thing except for I lengthen it by two. Instead of putting three on each of these, I put five on each of these. And then you just keep going back and forth. Now with this one, I might actually do I might actually do seven. So do another short one here and then do a long one here. I haven't quite decided, but you'll see the design once I finish it. Okay? Hey guys, so I have finished this off. I put I ended up doing seven. And another reason that I wanted to add these little uh, six millimeter uh, Chinese rainbow jaspers, what they're called, was because I'm also going to use these in the necklace when I string it. So, what you're going to need then to finish off your piece is... For a necklace, some beetle on. You can do 19 strand. It's a little bit more expensive than 7 strand. You can do 7 strand if you want. But I highly suggest going 19 or higher strands because the higher strands, the more flexible it is, the less likely that it's going to get kinked. Okay? Um, you're going to need that. You're going to need, I don't think I have it here with me. I have to go hunting. I've got tons of beads. i got to go dig them out. But, um, and findings. You're going to need, um, some pliers. These are called, there we go, if I can, here. Bead crimpers, so you're going to need some bead crimpers so that I can show you how to crimp off an end. Um, some pliers are always good, beater's pliers, and some wire snippers. Okay, normally you can get them all in one set. I have a couple of different those. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I have a whole bunch of uh, ones that I've gathered over the years. Um, what are those? I think those beetle on. That's kind of rubbed off now. But, yeah, you're going to need, there's usually kits, and I'll see if I can find some and put them in the descriptions for you. Um, you're going to need some crimp beads. Like I said, the pliers, the crimp pliers, and pliers for just being able to hold the string. Another thing I would suggest is bead stoppers. You put these on it. And put it on there in order to stop it, which I'll show you how to use those. You can get bigger ones too, and I had bigger ones. It's just a matter of tracking them down. Um, you're going to want beads. Or you can make your out of seed beads if you want. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make an actual necklace. And I wished I had one right here. I don't. I've got a bag full of strong jewelry but it's like packed away so I'm, I'm gonna have to dig it out so you can see but I mean I will show you the whole process of how I do it in the next week anyways and I will put a list in the description for what you're gonna need for next week's but we have created the bail which it doesn't look great now but once it's actually hanging from the strand, the string, and then once it has all of these matching beads on the actual um, string, it's going, it, it's really going to all come together. 
Okay? So if I can think of anything else that I'm forgetting at this moment. Oh, a clasp. You're going to need a clasp. Um, you can do a lobster clasp. Uh, you can do a spring clasp. You could do um, hook and eye. There's different kinds of finishing clasps. Um, they're called findings, so I will do some links to that too, but if you're going off on your own and you've never done anything like bead stringing before, there's a few things that you're going to need. One is the string, the pliers, um, the beading crimps, or the crimp beads, I should say, um, and definitely some sort of finding. They're... Findings can be earring wires, they can be um, uh, clasps, so it all kind of falls under findings is what it's called, okay? So, I hope you like this video. Uh, please give me a like, hit that subscribe if you haven't already, and um, don't forget about the little notifications so that you can be notified every Thursday. Granted, I release these every Thursday now. Once we finish up the um, the necklace, the bead stringing, then we'll move on to something else the next week. Like, um, maybe we'll pull out the polymer clay and we'll make some polymer clay pendants or something. Okay? So, um, sending you guys always love and light. See you next week.